Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the planning committee, Dr. Kirkwood and Dr. Brunt, for such a great session. Uh, I was tasked with talking about cholecystectomy after percutaneous cholecystostomy tube, indications, timing, and technique. I don't have any financial disclosures. Uh, I do want to disclose that there's very, very limited data on all of this, so a lot of this is just uh, expert opinion from uh, lots of experience. So we looked at this as part as of the, the, the um, study that was previously talked about, and right before we looked at all this, uh, the CHOCOLATE trial came out, which is a Dutch randomized trial that uh, randomized uh, patients with high-risk patients with acute cholecystitis to either laparoscopic cholecystectomy or a cholecystostomy tube. And that trial showed that there was uh, less morbidity and mortality in the group that went straight to cholecystectomy. So I kind of assumed that we were going to be seeing a lot less cholecystostomy tube as time went on. Um, unfortunately, uh, COVID uh, uh, reared its head and changed all that. Um, I realized I had the opportunity to come up with an incredible catchphrase that the media uh, can use for this, uh, you know, large number of cholecystostomy tubes that are uh, being placed because of COVID. Um, and so I tried to come up with a, uh, something that was catchy. Uh, unfortunately, cholecystostomy doesn't fit well into any phrase. Uh, but finally, I came up with the COVID cholecystostomy tube tidal wave. T-C-C-T-T-W, so if all you can put that on social media so that I become famous, I would appreciate it. So there's two groups of patients that are getting a lot of cholecystostomy tubes right now because of COVID. There's the COVID patients. Um, first of all, it's, it's known, there's uh, studies that show that COVID patients have higher risk of morbidity and mortality when they undergo surgery. Um, and so when these patients are developing cholecystitis, there's a, you know, a legitimate, uh, uh, leaning towards putting a cholecystostomy tube in rather than doing surgery at that time. Second of all, a lot of these patients are critically ill and they're uh, ending up with acalculus cholecystitis and getting cholecystostomy tubes in the ICU. And third, I found about seven case reports of patients that had COVID and afterwards developed acalculus cholecystitis um, where it's, it's uh, theorized that it's actually from the coronavirus and they were able to isolate the coronavirus in the wall of the, the gallbladder after these uh, surgeries. Whether or not this is real or not uh, remains to be seen, but at least um, some intriguing case reports. And then in the non-COVID patients, uh, a lot of patients are getting cholecystostomy tubes placed just because of the, the resources, um, resource limitations during COVID in, in hospitals that are overrun and when surgeries are being uh, canceled or delayed. Uh, and then third, um, there was an Irish study that I just found as I was researching this that found that uh, there was a 63% increase in acute cholecystitis um, in, in Ireland uh, during COVID. Uh, the authors uh, uh, assumed this was due to increased consumption of fatty foods during the period due to stress, anxiety, and boredom. So we have all these different reasons that patients are getting cholecystostomy tubes. And I'm sure, uh, like me, if you, uh, you know, see biliary patients in your clinic, you're seeing a lot more patients with cholecystostomy tubes. So it's a very timely subject. Um, so again, you know, we, the, we had this uh, task force that was led by Dr. Brunt and, and uh, published these guidelines in 2020 in both annals of surgery and, and uh, surgical endoscopy. And I was part of the group that looked at the question of uh, should interval laparoscopic cholecystostomy or cystectomy versus no additional treatment be used for patients previously treated by cholecystostomy drainage. And you see our recommendation there. Uh, in patients with acute calculus cholecystitis, we recommend interval cholecystectomy if the patient is a good surgical candidate. If they're a poor or borderline surgical candidate, then we su suggest non-surgical uh, approach, including percutaneous stu stone clearance through the tube tract or tube removal and observation if the cystic duct is patent. So. Uh, again, extrovert opinion, like a lot of the stuff um, that we found, and, and, and kind of a lot of, uh, you know, kind of glossing over the details in this, in this recommendation. Basically, when we looked at the data, you can't compare the two groups, because obviously the people that don't get an interval cholecystectomy are the sick patients, and the people that do are the healthy patients. The, the drawback to not doing the interval cholecystectomy is about 50% uh, of those patients eventually end up with recurrent symptoms. Uh, 
and, uh, and they're more likely to need an urgent cholecystectomy. And we know that if somebody has an urgent cholecystectomy, they're more likely to, to end up with an open cholecystectomy and more likely to have uh, complications. On the other side, uh, patients that had cholecystectomy after cholecystostomy tube placement did have uh, increased 30-day uh, mortality. It was uh, 2% in the best studies. So you're kind of trying to weigh these things. And obviously that 2% mortality is really going to depend on how conservative you are with picking good surgical candidates or how liberal you are. Uh, if you're more conservative, obviously your rate's going to be lower. If you're liberal, your rate's going to be higher. So one important word in this recommendation is calculus. Uh, we didn't address acalculus cholecystitis, but when you look at the data for acalculus cholecystitis, uh, if you just remove the tube and watch the patients, in the smaller studies, only about 7 to 14% of, of patients had recurrent symptoms. In the largest trial, which had eight-year follow-up, only 2.7% of people had recurrent uh, symptoms after just removing the tube. So I think it's pretty reasonable in these patients that are acutely ill and get a calculus cholecystitis to make sure there's no obstruction of the cystic duct and then remove the tube. I skipped a, there was a slide, it highlighted a good surgical candidate. That's not a question we're gonna be able to answer today. There's a lot to it, but you know, that's a judgment you have to make on your own. And then the other thing is after the inflammation is subsided. And that directly um, segues into our next topic, which is the timing of cholecystectomy. And at that time, you know, there really wasn't any data on this. Um, and so we kinda, you know, I kinda use six months. We know that, uh, Inflammation tends to resolve within, or six weeks, sorry, resolve within six weeks. And truthfully, I kind of try to make the patients wait as long as possible, but usually that's about two to three months before they get so sick of the tube they don't want to wait anymore. But COVID provided us with a lot more data. Um, and the COVID Surge Collaborative has come out with a lot of data on the increased uh, risk of surgery after uh, COVID infection. And this can help us in these patients that uh, have uh, a cholecystostomy tube placed because of COVID. Um, this is patients that had asymptomatic or mild COVID. And you can see uh, on the chart on the left, you know, the green dotted line is baseline adjusted mortality risk in patients who have elective surgery. And the red dotted line is uh, baseline adjusted mortality risk in patients that have urgent surgery. And the solid lines are the risk in patients with uh, asymptomatic or mild COVID. And so you can see up to, up to six weeks, these patients have significantly higher, you know, more than double the adjusted mortality risk. And uh, the odds ratio are there on the, in the table. You know, 30-day mortality uh, odds ratio is, is three for these patients until you get to uh, over seven weeks. So my recommendation in patients that have asymptomatic or mild uh, COVID, you wait at least two months after either, either the COVID resolves or the, the patient has their cholecystostomy tube placed and resolves uh, the acute cholecystitis, you know, depending which is happening later. In patients that have more severe symptoms, this chart shows the green line again is asympto asymptomatic patients. The yellow line is patients that uh, have symptoms, uh, you know, uh, moderate symptoms, but the symptoms have resolved. And the red line is patients that have persistent uh, symptoms from their COVID. And so you can see even in those patients that have moderate symptoms or persistent symptoms, their adjusted mortality risk is, is, is significant up until seven weeks. Uh, and we don't have data beyond that yet. So, um, you know, the patients with uh, moderate symptoms that have completely resolved, I think, you know, I think two to three months is, is what I'm gonna use going forward because um, it, it seems like at seven weeks it's getting close to baseline. Uh, but I really worry about those patients that had pretty significant COVID and had persistent symptoms. Um, and this doesn't touch on the patients that were really critically ill. Uh, we still don't have good data on that. So a little bit about technique, I'm short on time. I, I went through a lot of videos in preparation, hoping to show a, a good video, but truthfully, these videos are pretty ugly. Uh, a couple things I noticed uh, was common between the videos. These, these gallbladders tend to be tubularized. They, I think they contract down around the cholecystostomy tube, and they're really shrunken and tubularized. So, and you can also see, uh, 
as we go look at the, the area of the infundibulum here, you know, there's a lot of inflammation there, especially down low. These are not gallbladders you're going to be able to get a critical view of safety on the huge majority of the time. So you need to know what your uh, bailout method is, and we've had two good talks already about that, uh, and be prepared to use that. I like to leave the tube in. Uh, number one, if it's really severe, you can sometimes use the tube and follow it into the fundus of the gallbladder to actually find the gallbladder. Uh, number two, a lot of times it'll, it'll retract your liver up for you and, and, and free up one of your hands. Uh, if it is in my way, then I, what I do is I cut the tube at the abdominal wall and leave it hanging out of the gallbladder so I can use it as a handle to manipulate the gallbladder. Uh, because a lot of times you can't effectively grab the fundus of this gallbladder. Um, and, and, and again, almost all of these that I reviewed, there was no way you were able to get a clip around the cystic duct. I had to use an endo loop because the cystic duct is thickened and, and you can't really thin it down. Um, so just be prepared uh, to use an endo loop or some alternative technique when you uh, go to ligate the cystic duct on these. Thanks for your attention. I look forward to the discussion. <laughs>